Hey, Mrs. Peter again. Um, I'm going to go through our uh, Harpoon 5 Pining for the Fjords scenario. This is going to be kind of a more of a story so far. Um, this was the first Harpoon 5 scenario that I've created myself, and um, I'm going to go ahead and pre admit, preemptively admit it. Um, could have used a little bit of better planning before I started. Um, but I think it's become an interesting match, and uh, it will it will get interesting as we go through it. Um, I think for starters, I'm going to just kind of show very top level what's what's happening. Um, so the units involved are a kid class um, USS kid um, kid type, excuse me, um, destroyer as well as an Oliver Hazard Perry frigate. Uh, we also have a Los Angeles class um, submarine, fast attack, uh, the US, uh, the SSN Baltimore, excuse me. Um, we also have a K502 uh, Victor III Soviet submarine, fast attack, uh, Sovereignty um, destroyer. Uh, there is going to be one error that you're going to see. At everything was labeled properly in the class and everything, but I, I put the wrong um, uh, type label on it. For starters, it gets fixed in the middle of it. You'll see that kind of flip. We also have a the Zadorny, which is um, more of an anti-submarine um, frigate, and um, you'll see throughout the match that it does not have a lot of range of its own, so it kind of relies on the helos coming out and so forth, which you'll see here in a minute. Um, so let's go through. I'm going to go through this as the showing all first, and um, I'll let it play through naturally, and then I'll go through slow, and then I'll show it from the blue side, and then I'll show it from the red side, and we'll go from there. All right, so they have no... This is entirely double-blind at this point. Um, we were doing this through discord um, using blind channels and we, we eventually actually um, set the uh, sub commanders in their own rooms as well for um, double double blind now in theory this worked very well um, but in just execution it it did add a little bit to the administration and I I, I, I do completely recommend double blind but um, it it can get a little. You need to you need to understand going into it with a with a certain size match that it's going to take it's going to take a while. Um, so, hold on a second. Um, here we go. Um, let us do the entire thing. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to kind of say say more as we go along. So I might not say much this first run. I'm going to probably be zooming in and out, and I might annoy you first, but let's got to get used to what's showing up. All right, so this, the, the, both of these um, task groups, um, these surface groups are, as you can kind of see, I put the, um, the text tags are on, and I'm going to put, I'm not going to do tracks. I have uh, speed leaders, so um, if you're not used to Simplot speed leaders, this, this is going to show you how much, uh, how the distance in nautical miles that the unit will um, be moving within the next turn if, if, if unchanged. Uh, that, so that takes into account the not only the course but the speed. So it's very nice. Um, I only just recently started using that. I, I always use tracks for some reason. I like to see the tracks with tears in my cheek like a clown. Um, so here we go. So this is the. So we start to approach each other now. Let me pause this for a second. So affectionately, I added. Um, a, uh, a twosome of uh, F-14 Tomcats from, coming from a carrier group in this direction off screen. A lot of these, a lot of these elements, I'm using more for a role-playing perspective. But there is going to be, there's going to be some breakthrough here, which you'll see in a moment. It's kind of interesting. It's going to be kind of fun, hopefully. Um, so we do have a Soviet LST group, an amphibious uh, landing group. There's four landing craft as well as support groups. Now the way I represented that in the sim plot was just by a um, just a single. Um, surface unit. At this point, I, I don't have it moving. I'm just kind of denoting where it is, but, uh, but eventually I do make it move towards the, towards the um, coastline. 
Um, the, the target area is Tromso, which I, I, I hope I'm saying this right, I think it's right here. But um, you'll see later that I actually add a radar installation, which is going to come into play from a rolling full point perspective later too. Um, so let's let the action begin, or further on. Um, the uh, And as you can see, I, I gave them call signs Maverick and Viper. If you recall, the Viper said he'd uh, fly with them at any time, so here we go. He called it in. Um, let's see how they do. So here we go. We're going to go, go, go. And you'll see that the uh, we have KA25PL uh, ASW helos coming off from both the Sorenyi and the Zadorni, and um, they are making their way. They don't, I don't believe at this point they have, let's see, they do not have a contact yet, but I'm not going to get too into detail of that until until I start showing both sides. As you can see, they are picking up the um, inbound um, Tomcats. Uh, they're noticing they have two AD, AWG 9 radars um, ping, so these guys are actively searching. Uh, at first, it did distract them a little bit. Um, Honestly, that was kind of the intention to just kind of see see how people would react. Um, so it was interesting. Uh, here we go. I one thing I will point out is I did I did um, of course uh, plot out certain things that are about to happen. But there's a point where there will be other naval uh, um, um, flights coming in here, and I just I let them become a dogfight that really is there for show more than anything but uh, there is a result that will happen eventually um, again here's where the main gameplay is going to be um, so here we go let's go back to all and let's keep it going uh, so what you'll see is the we start to get some passive detections this is a little bit off here uh, what ends up happening over here is that the let me back it up just a couple Okay, so right here we have a fun little um, VTOL combo to uh, to Yak 38s coming in from again an off an off map uh, Soviet uh, carrier group that's not visible. Now you'll see here that we got some Phoenix uh, AIM 54Cs being shot off, and as you can see with its vector, it's firing on the naval inbound. Um, um, Yak 38s, uh, VTOLs, uh, very interesting aircraft. I, I kind of like them for some reason. Um, so what happens here is that one of the Phoenix missiles does take out one of the Yak 38s, but one of the Yak 38s does break through. And the reason it breaks through is, um, well, guess what we come, guess what we have coming over here. We got um, two um, SG 27s Cobras coming in fast so it kind of drives uh, Maverick and um, Viper a little little batty here and they they start going for them because otherwise they're gonna be taken out um, now again I let this embroil as a dogfight circle very similar to how I do this one but this is now in play one of the Yak 38s um, Yak of 38s does break through and you'll kind of see that as we go through All right. I will continue and then so once I'm done getting up to where we're at I'll show you what the blue perspective was throughout and I'll, then I'll show you what the red perspective was and it kind of gives you a little bit better idea what's going on from each perspective all right so here we go um, as you can see what happens here is I believe there is a detection and there is the the helos which are about here now have detected the surface uh, American units here and that causes the Yak-38 which is not using an active radar it doesn't have one it only has a Gen 0 RWR this is this is basically a fly by um, not wire uh, VTOL it's very very a little archaic but effective it's a nice it's a nice strike aircraft I don't know what its service record was like it was probably probably horrible but it uh, seemed pretty Pretty, um, it's almost like a the A10 of VTOLs, if you will. Um, so let's see what happens here. Just that's why I just wanted to just show you that because that's why the Yak 38 did change course. Um, the Helos radioed, um, well, the Yak 38 radioed radioed the surface uh, group here and found the was told where to go. Um, here we go. Let's go back to all 
and just kind of see what's going on now. In the meantime, the um, both the Soviet and American submarines were, were very stealthy. Uh, I think both have played um, subsurface harpoon before because it was it's, it's very interesting to watch them be cat and mouse. Um, I think what ended up happening here a little bit is that the um, K502 in particular detected low-flying sea sprite um, with its towed array um, and it was a very low percent chance it was very interesting because what it did is it, um, it it thought it was a surface unit right at first until it until it figured out what the contact was so that that, that played out kind of interestingly I might talk to that again when we show the red side um, the blue um, again both 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 submarine uh, officers played played their units well uh, in, in a in a stealthy manner but I feel like because of the separation of the groups that um, it, it kind of didn't the the Baltimore uh, Baltimore did get uh, a convergent zone contact of I think it was the Swiftremni uh, and he did eventually know the classification of it and then of course I think it was about 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 back here where he got that and we'll see that maybe a little bit more readily as um, as we go back through the blue turn so the out of everybody from a sur subsurface perspective the K502 had uh, a ping in this direction right and he kind of he, he does end up going a little bit more towards that right um, we also had an interesting occurrence in the middle where the helos got really close let me yeah like right here they were within a nautical a 1.9 uh, nautical miles of each other here so they actually had a visual of each other and I think only um, uh, uh, hand gesture expletives were, were exchanged there because nobody nobody apparently had a shoulder mounted SAM on them or a 9mm or, um, or the uh, Soviet option of choice so let's go forward again because I think we're about here now let's, I'm going to let it just play out so the Yak 38 basically at this point is inbound the K502 is aware of something here. The Balt uh, Baltimore is aware of a ship of that specific class in that general direction. Um, I can't recall if it was active the whole time. I didn't. I didn't have really good active radars going on here. Sorry about that. Um, so what the Red Sky One do is doing this is again the Soviet uh, KA25PO. It's 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 trying to keep its distance from the Taylor uh, Taylor over here, the frigate. Uh, the OH Perry frigate. Um, what happens at this point too? The Taylor actually had in this scenario a. I had rolled for this a bit originally. The Taylor uh, Taylor had the um, another sea sprite that took off at this point too, and it's kind of um, they had it go in this direction. And another thing to point out is the sea sprite is kind of going in an interesting direction here too. And I don't know necessarily if they're trying to separate for a cross fix. Uh, I didn't really talk to the um, captain involved there about that. Um, but that's that's why you're gonna see this one. This sea sprite kind of go this way, and this guy's going this way, and this guy's going kind of towards the group. And I think I think they might be trying to do a cross fix type thing here. Um, but let's play it out. So at this point, things we're we're almost to the end of where we're at. Uh, Yak 38 is inbound. Uh, current this this guy's pretty much line of sight visual only. Um, he is, he does have uh, KH 23 anti surface missiles. He also has you know of course the accompanying um, uh, pod the, for guidance but he need he will require um, line of sight throughout uh, from beginning to end um, to fire on it so it's going to be become very interesting as to whether or not um, the um, the kid uh, kid or Taylor will be able to um, to take him out beforehand um, I I believe it is the Taylor that will detect it. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and see if I... You know what, I might not have even marked that properly, honestly. I don't think so, because I think the Taylor was active at this point with its 3D uh, air search. And I think it picks it up about here, about 38 nautical miles away. So we're up to the point where we're where they're the tailor is going to have to decide whether or not to take you know to try to take a stab at the um, inbound or and I believe the kid will have been 
um, relay that information within within a 30 second increment that's kind of how I ruled it uh, let's show all again and let's keep going till the end here and just kind of let it go out so yeah, as you can see the axe going in and it's within within a three minute increment of being within visual so I think I can't remember what the visual is I think it's about three point eight nautical miles so we're, this this is about where it would fire and again right now these guys i think it's one more increment back that they both have detected the inbound by way of taylor going active with air search as well as um its surface search so i'm going to back up kind of catch my breath for a moment and um so it's an interesting scenario. I kind of like what I did with the Maverick and Viper in the in the group. As you can see over here, the group is now making its way. I I kind of threw it out here more of a marker, but then now I'm kind of using it as a almost a timer, right? So of course the scenario is overall. I probably should have led with this. Is that um, you know the amphibious group is trying to make it over here, and and as you can see here now, you can also see visibly the radar uh, array installation, and there there does happen to be a pretty pretty strong array there in Tromso um, in that fjord um, and hopefully everybody got the pining for the fjords joke of the uh, scenario name um, okay so let's step back a little bit literally I'm going to step back just a little bit so you can see the scope of where we're at um, of course this is the noise you see excuse all the google map stuff over here um, Mermanx over yonder um, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting area. I kind of like the Google Maps, but I, background, but but it's just not. Um, I'm kind of more now used to the Aegis style, so I think eventually I'm going to port this over before we play again. I think I'm going to port it over to um, kind of like the more Aegis style that I've done in other videos. Um, so let's just go a little. Let's let's just show it from from both individual sides, just kind of kind of give you an idea. And I, let's go. Back all the way. All right, so let's show it from the uh, American point of view. Um, okay, hey, hey, I'm going, I'm going. Hey, what's going on here? Hey, I hear there's some Soviets over here. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Why are my friendlies over here? They must see something I don't see. Um, so again, Maverick and Viper calling in. Hey, how's it going, y'all? Uh, fast movers going. Sees the price taking off. I'm going a little bit here. Okay, so we're still we still don't know where anybody is at. We still don't know where anybody's at. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? Um, so the sea sprites have picked up a surface unit. That is where that is when I added the radar installation there too. We 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 from an intelligence perspective, we we know that an amphibious um, assault group is um, is in this general area. Uh, I tend to do things in almost like a four grid square. Hey, this is where it's going on something's going on um so this is obvious this is the picket line if you will of the soviets we're starting to pick it up pun intended um so here we go i can't uh, and then you can actually see there was a course change here at this point this is where the air action is beginning you have the cobras coming in you have maverick and viper in a little bit of a hot seat here they've already fired their um phoenix uh, a group of two phoenix missiles at this set of uh, flight of uh, two Yak uh, 38s, Yak of 38s, uh, VTOL, naval, interesting aircraft, look them up. Um, so let's go forward. Um, at this point, the there is a, let's see, we see the, let's, let me show all size. Yeah, we pick up the, this sea sprite picks up the two inbound Russian helicopters as well at this point and and it's also picking up an active surface um, radar for an MR 710M Fregat M which they can pretty much determine I mean there are, there are a few different classes that might that use it um, but they have a pretty good idea it's a destroyer of some form um, at this point and they're relaying this information back so let's go forward a little bit all right this is where the visual okay at this point the dogfight has ensued here 
and there is an air unit of oh no that's the surface they don't at this point know the exact location of the um, Yakov inbound VTOL this was this was a kind of a fun point where they were lit within 1.9 nautical miles of each other and uh, there was visual contact here so they know something's going on the reds do too all right so let's go forward a little bit at this point there is um, the helos have picked up two surface units and of course relayed this information back now as you can see um, scenario designer kind of went stupid on this as far as the distances I think I, I I went a little bit too strategic in my mind in setting this up so um, again this was the first scenario I had uh, written honestly for Harpoon at all uh, so we're you know we're talking pretty long distances at this point still um, okay so let's go for let me reposition okay so at this point the helos are kind of reacting again that dark star eh, dark sky one c sprite is is kind of reacting to where which to where the um the soviet helicopter had been seen uh so he's kind of reacting in this direction this c sprite is still going towards contacts this was a second c sprite coming off the um the tailor um so let's keep going boom boom this is what we still see and the one thing i will say that again i think i screwed up is that they did let's go back one I think about right there they would actually have seen this as a surface contact excuse me an air contact um, at this point so this is in effect this is where we're at this is one step forward they would have uh, Taylor would have a um, 3d um, air search contact at this point right here I believe I hope I'm saying that right um, so we are in the middle of we have to we're gonna have to break this down as an inbound um, airborne contact similar to how a SAM excuse me similar to how an ASW or anti-ship ASM excuse me anti-ship missile same thing you, it's, it's an inbound airborne um, they don't necessarily know the class at this point but based on its speed and its and the variability of its flight or the, just the they feel like it is an airborne unit all right um they will eventually get a visual hopefully not the visual of a cage 23 coming at the side of their um, frigate or destroyer all right so sorry i kind of went off script there this is what they are seeing but they do also see that unit the inbound um, Yakov. All right, so let's flip the script here and go back through what's visible here. All right, so let's go forward. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, what's going on? All right. Oh, what's this? Uh, Fastbound's inbound. Uh, the um, K502 Victor 3 type sub has a course change there. The helis have taken off. The F-14 Tomcats are still inbound. And boom, we are relayed information about an inbound attack um, flight as well as a support cap flight or escort flight of um, Cobras coming from land bases here as the Soviets have invaded Nor Sweden and Norway. Um, so boom 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 let's keep going so we also wait, let me back it up one so we've also picked up um, US helo type this is actually a Canadian radar um, and so they're reacting to that as you can kind of see here and at this point they pick up uh, the uh, radar signature for fast mover aim 54 Phoenix from the from the um, fast movers that had come inbound, so they're like, "Oh boy, what's going on?" And um, Phoenix is going towards. There's actually Phoenix is going towards the Cobras as well, but um, there's Phoenix is going towards this flight. Oh hey, my friend survived! Yay. Um, okay, uh, let's see what else. I think that that degree is wrong right there, but 
they have picked up at this point the lead. I um, think it's Taylor, USS Taylor in front there. Boom. Now they've picked up both. They have the course and speed of the originally detected unit because it's a medium size. This was a smaller size ship and they finally picked it up. And that's about it. Let's keep going a little bit. They, the Yak Kalev had um, reacted, as you can see here, and it's headed headed inbound for its surface attack. And this should get interesting. And that's the story so far. Hope you enjoyed this overview. Uh, you're welcome to make comments. I know I made mistakes throughout this, so uh, you're welcome to, to restate them. Um, but it's been fun so far. It, it Again, with play by form it, it does take a while so if you try to do one of this size I do recommend it being go ahead and start 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 the units um, the groups um, within maybe 10 nautical miles of detection as opposed to what I did it was, it was a mistake on my part from poor scenario management but uh, oh well live and learn it's been fun all right have a good one